I wonder who we're going to meet today. You lot are coming with me. Whoa. Whoa. Today we're going to focus on some power and endurance techniques. So squeeze, stand and lift. Keep going, Mia. You can do it. Woo! Guinness World Records has created a special set of challenges designed for kids. Where our squad of six can meet incredible sportsmen and women and hopefully set new Guinness World Records titles. Oh, yeah. For each official attempt, three of us will be giving it our best shot. We're a team. So today it's me, Emily, Kush and Mia. I'm Emily. I love swimming and football and love scoring goals. I am Kush. I'm really competitive, but I'm definitely a team player. I am Mia. I've always wanted a Guinness World Records title. Maybe today's the day. I'm very determined and I'll do pretty much anything if it means breaking a record. I once saw a world record attempt where someone was smashing lots of karate blocks. I'm not sure if I want to try it, but I might. I would describe myself as determined. I don't give up. I'm quite small, the smallest in my class, so I want to prove that even if you're small, you can still make a big difference. I want to prove that I can try new things really quickly and that I can be the best in the world at something. I wonder who we're going to meet today. Yeah, I wonder what the challenge is. Wait, we're moving, but there's no driver. This is a good way to save petrol. How? Who is it? My name's Andrew Thompson, four times Britain's strongest woman, and you lot are coming with me. Whoa. Andrea won World's Strongest Woman in 2018. She claimed the Guinness World Records title for heaviest log lift by a female, lifting 135 kilos. Whoa, that's heavy. She was actually pulling a minibus. How strong is she? I never thought anybody could do that. I mean, I couldn't do that. My dad couldn't do that. <laughs> I can't believe you pulled the minibus. I can pull a train, I can pull a plane. I had an image of a train on the tracks and then her pulling it and everyone inside the train sort of going but look at this Whoa. Whoa. your official attempt will be the most swiss balls on a platform within one minute a minute are you kidding me that ball's bigger than me and we only had one minute to do it yeah you'll be fine it's so high what i've got to do looks really hard i'm going to teach you lots of tips and tricks and all the skills that i've had to learn for world's strongest women competitions so how are you guys feeling towards this I'm feeling quite excited, actually. A bit nervous. I'm worried I'll only get five. You'll get more than that. You'll do your best. I was worried that I was not going to get as many as I could onto the platform. OK, so let's go get some training in before the main event. So today, guys, we're going to focus on some power and endurance techniques and some key skills that are going to be really important for our official attempt. What's endurance? Endurance is the ability to maintain a high intensity of power for a long period of time. I was looking forward to how to improve my endurance because I'm not that good at it and I really want to improve. How strong are you? Well, I can lift the equivalent of a pygmy hippo, which is about 240 kilos. What? Endurance is our ability to do something that's physically tough and keep going when we get kind of tired. Andrea was the world's strongest woman. That means she's got loads of endurance. Her muscles can work for a very long time. But even the world's strongest woman needs to take a break. Improving endurance is all about doing a little more each time and training often. This will help us prepare our body for harder tasks, such as setting new world records. Ready, guys? Yeah! Excellent, let's get our warm up in. I was quite nervous, like, am I gonna be able to do this? Okay, so jogging on the spot, high knees. This is when our breathing techniques come in handy. Keep the breathing nice and steady. And we're gonna do two burpees. So, full body to the floor, jump up, reach to the sky. Excellent. I think a burpee is called a burpee because it makes you burp when you do it. Because it's named after the person who invented it, Mr. Burpee. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm quite warm. Are you guys warm yet? Yeah. yeah. Andrea is training us really hard, but it's really good because we're going to need all these skills for the challenge. So one of the most important parts of the Atlas lift is your position over the ball. So when you take your legs, try and get them as wide as possible and hold the ball into position. From there, I want you to bend at the knees and at the hips. So now I want you to come down and try and hug the ball as much as you can. And I want you to have your chest on the ball. Excellent. So if you bring your bum down just a little bit more, 
good. The exercise where we had to squat down and stick our bottoms out was really fun, but it was also quite difficult because we had to level ourselves and our backs had to be straight. Quite uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable, yes. Uncomfortable. yes. It was like giving a ball a massive hug. So the next bit is to get the lift. So we're just going to gently squeeze in that squat position and just pick the ball up. Good. I found getting my arms around the ball quite tricky because they were so big. I didn't know I could hold a squat position for that long. Do you ever worry you won't be able to pick something up? I do, but that's where I like to challenge myself. And if there's a challenge in front of me, I will try my very hardest. In training, we were working hard. Excellent. And then down again. And drill the drill. So we're going to squeeze and come up. After drill. So squeeze, stand and lift. After drill. Oh, come on, Andrea. OK, for this next bit, we're going to be working on our pace and our breathing. So we're going to pick up a beanbag, running, pushing it on the plinth. So it has to stay on the plinth, OK? So we're on a nice, gentle pace, but as quick as you can. And we're going to keep our breathing nice and steady, and then we're just going to see how we go. I wasn't sure about endurance, because I'm not very strong. I don't have many muscles, because I'm, like, the smallest in my class. Three, two, one, go. During the training, it made me feel much more confident about my endurance. So altogether, this was a really positive experience. Well done, Kush. We are running back and forward. It's very tiring, but fun at the same time. How was that? You're tired out? Towards the end, I, I sort of sprinted, so... So you can now see that going too fast could make you lose a little bit of energy too quickly. So we don't want to go too fast, we don't want to run out of steam, but we want to make sure that we get all the balls done in that time. The pace exercise was very useful because it helped us learn that we can't just all sprint at the start. We'd have to keep the same pace and then towards the end, you just go for it. How many calories do you burn after you do a competition and how much do you need to eat? So you guys probably burn about 1,800 calories a day and I would need to eat about 4,000 calories a day. 4,000 is a lot. Like, a lot of food. Now, for me, that would mean having some eggs, some bacon, some toast, some porridge, fruit, yogurts, and maybe some nuts, another piece of fruit. I've just had some toast. I hope that's going to be enough. Some chicken, some rice, spaghetti bolognese, garlic bread, and then just something just before I go to bed. That's more than I eat in a week. I think on a normal-sized dinner plate, it would probably be like that high. If I had to eat that much food, I'd probably be quite excited, because I love food. So I'd enjoy it. <laughs> OK, guys, so what we're going to do, so all the techniques that we've been practising now, we're going to put it into a little run. So we're going to run up to the ball, stand legs either side of it, bend with our knees and our hips, scoop and squeeze, pick up, and we're going to run and put it onto the plinth. When you get to the plinth, you're going to have to stretch a little bit higher. So go up on your tiptoes and really stretch high. Andrea did really well when she was helping us with training. So she gets 10 points out of 10. Go! I learned to pace myself, especially at the end. And really stretch high. It was a very great experience, and I will definitely continue to draw things from it in years to come. Oh, awesome. That was really good. How was that? Good. good. That was OK? Good. At the end of training, I was much more confident about the challenge because I got much better at the things that I was worried about. You guys have done really, really well. So I'm going to set you a little bit of homework. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a big pile of clothes, as big as you can, and we're going to scoop them up and try and hold them for as long as possible. This is going to really test the grip strength that we've been practising. Did my mum put you up to this? No, she didn't, I promise. Well done, everyone. So the next time I'm going to see you is going to be for the official attempt. You've done an amazing job. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks, Thanks Andrea. Andrea. You're very welcome. Here I go. Andrea's homework is harder than it looks, but it's great practice. Why don't you give it a go at home? And remember, oh. it's all about the squeeze. I'm feeling really ready for tomorrow now. <laughs> With new challenges, it is a bit scary because you don't know how you're going to do, but it's a really good experience because you learn lots of skills on the way. This was definitely a very good opportunity to prove my motto of the smallest can do big things. I was super confident because I knew that I was trained by the world's strongest woman, but it was going to be up to us to do it. I am an official Guinness World Records adjudicator, Pravin Patel. When the adjudicator came through the door, I was kind of like, OK, this is a real thing. You've got to be ready. You can do this. Today, you will be attempting a Guinness World Records title for the most Swiss balls placed on a platform 
in one minute. Because we only had a minute, it gave a bit of added pressure. You will start behind the start line and not be touching any of the Swiss balls. You have to move the Swiss balls one at a time to a race platform three meters away. To be counted, the Swiss balls must stay on the platforms for the duration of the attempt. And the record to beat is 10 in one minute. There's three of us with three chances each. Let's break the record. Feeling ready. When I realised I had to get it all done in under a minute, I still thought I probably had a good chance because I'd learned a lot and I was very confident. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Emily, you nice can do pace. this. That was Emily, good. Well done. I think the best one was always going to be the first one. Keep that pace nice and steady. Because I built up lots of energy, and I think that's why it's very, very important to keep your pace, like Andrew said. That's the big one. That's it, Emily. Come on! It's the big one now. <gasps> Excellent. And the last one, come on. When I got past the 10 balls... Hands off. I felt amazing. Bring it back. But I was like, can't celebrate. Hands off. And again. There's still 15 seconds to go. You can still do more. Hands off. Oh, excellent. Oh. That was good. Well done. She beat it. It felt brilliant when I broke the original record because I knew I'd secured it for the team. She did so well. That was really good. That was really good. Wish me luck, everyone. Go. Remember to keep your breathing nice and steady. The one thing was the size of the Swiss balls. That made me think I need to work on how I wrap my arms around it. Onto the big ones. That's it. Stay focused. You can do it. And each ball got bigger and bigger and bigger. And <laughs> Well done. I was really happy because I got over 10. I'm here, ready for the challenge. I'm very excited, but also nervous. Go. Come on, good technique. Ready? You can do it. I was quite nervous because Mia and Emily were really good as well. So they would be tough opponents to beat. That's it, stay focused. But it doesn't matter because whoever did it, we all did it as a team. Scared me. Woo! My first attempt was really strong. Two attempts down, we were on a roll. Now, we had one more chance to be our personal best and break the record. Time to dig deep. OK, guys, this is where the endurance part comes in. So everything that we've been practising on, keep your breathing nice and steady and ready for your last attempt. Good luck. Andrea was a brilliant teacher and she gave us lots of tips and I think I put them all together for the official attempt. So, Emily, this is for your third attempt. Three, two, one, go! Come on, yeah, Emily. Good pacing. Good pace. It's kind of difficult bending down one second and the next reaching up. It really puts a lot of strain on your body. You're doing excellent, Emily. Well done. Come on, you can do this. But I think I got quite good pace and then I kind of sped up towards the end. Excellent. Keep going. Remember to squeeze and on the tiptoes. Nice. Come on. Good job. And hands off. And again. That's it. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Well done, Emily. Well done. It was a very good run, and I was very pleased with myself. Competing is about taking part and do the best you can. Three, two, one, go. Sit me up. You can do it. That's good. On the third attempt, I felt quite confident because once I got the hang of it, I was like, yeah, this is going to be easy, and I may break this record. Excellent. dropped her ball, she didn't give up and she kept on going. You have to return it back to the start line. I was a bit disappointed, but I still knew I could break the record. So stay focused now, Mia. I thought she made a brilliant comeback when she dropped the ball. I believe in you. Keep you going, really that's well. it. I was like, come on, you can do it. Keep your breathing steady. If I hadn't have dropped the ball, my third attempt would be my best. Andrew helped me when I got back. She was like, it's fine. In a competition, I did that once. I was winning World's Strongest Woman, but I messed up one of the events. So I went from first to fourth because of one event, and I went home and I cried for months. But do you know what I did the next year? I went and won it. It was very inspiring when she told us the story because it just proves that everybody makes mistakes, but you have to come back from them. That taught me to never give up because anything is possible. Three, two, one, go! Good, Chris. Stay focused. Keep going. Andrea was a massive inspiration because she kept on motivating us and kept on praising us. Excellent. Keep going. Good breathing there, Kush. Kush did really well. He was very fast and he definitely worked very hard. I knew it would be really close with the record title. I thought it would either be Kush or Emily. And again. Big push now. Well done. And again. 
I would say that I'm very determined because I'm always trying new things and hey, you might get a world record for it. Today, you attempted the Guinness World Records title for the most Swiss balls placed on platforms in one minute. And just to remind you, the record to beat is 10 in one minute. Collectively, you all broke the record. One of you achieved a total of 14. Congratulations, Kush. You are the record holder. I was surprised that Kush got 14, so we were all really proud. Kush did really well. I think he deserves to break the record. You are officially a man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was amazing to get a Guinness World Records title. The children did amazingly. I'm so proud of all of them. I'm really, really happy. I think that this can inspire other children to know that anyone can do it. You too could become a record breaker. There are plenty of records for different talents. And there are also records especially designed for kids. Even just practicing is fun. And you can learn so much. But you could end up proving you're the best in the world at something. Ask your grown-ups to find out more about how you can break the record.